Hello, uh, welcome back to MTX's podcast. I'm Fraser and this is Akudo, and today we're going to be discussing the topic of TikTok. TikTok has been it's been a crazy one for us lately, hasn't it? Hundred percent, man. We've um, we've managed to grow a page literally in seven days, from no followers up to nearly seven thousand, and that is only with just under twenty pieces of content. And I think it's because um, that's actually what we want to talk about today: the idea of businesses transitioning onto TikTok, because not a lot of businesses have done that. Um, a lot of businesses still see TikTok as a kids' social media platform. Yeah. Uh, for influencers and all those type of things, they don't necessarily see. Like even when companies decide to go into TikTok, you find they're looking for influencers on TikTok mm -hmm. to use, and don't realize they themselves could. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, the platform now you can be using it to promote products, services, or even just take that edge off. Like I feel everybody's online presence; they're always trying to look professional. They're always trying to be quite serious. TikTok's a platform where you can sort of strip that all down, be yourself, and just have fun with it, really, and just create. Kind of anything you want to create within it's reason. You even said that because today we've got a list from, I can't remember the name of the website, but we're going to put it up so that you guys can see. Um, they share some tips about um, top 10 tips for businesses and experts to understand when going on to TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the tips they actually mentioned was um, the first one is literally like have fun with it. That's yeah. the one I have here. I've written this in order, so that's just the one I have here. Like, have fun with it. Okay. Um, and what we want to do today is just talk about how a lot, if not all of these tips, are the typical thing you will find a business not wanting to do. So I find it very interesting that a business almost has to completely change and completely yeah. see itself yeah. in a different way when they're going onto social media, especially social media's like uh, platforms like TikTok. Mm -hmm. So the first one, obviously, when we talk about having fun with it, that's not something you associate with most businesses because no. they're very formal, yep. professional, and they just want to keep it very, very strict, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, what, what can you say? Like, what do you think in terms of like, how do you translate fun I mean, to a company that's always been so formal? I think when we sort of started doing it for Walsh or Wood, we were looking at ways that we would best get attention. And I think for us, it was either being funny. So something's happening in the workplace, you know, behind the scenes. I think for businesses to really open up that second aspect, a lot of people only see the professionalism, the stuff that they want you to see. And it's kind of opening that door um, to making sure that people can sort of look at something happening behind the scenes, people person, the people's personalities like within the office, that kind of stuff. But on the flip side of that, you don't necessarily just have to be fun. You can be informative. And a lot of the posts that we were putting out were people learning things from our experts in-house um, and just offering that, that value, really. Yeah, but I think in my situation, because from the things I see, like Fraser is like our head videographer, I'm the creative director. Uh, Fraser does a lot of putting the videos together. And in my personal opinion, like you've put them together in a fun way. Yeah. Like you've made it fun yeah. to watch a garage. Whereas that's not usually something you associate with a garage. No. Is, no, no. you know, I drop my car, get my MOT done, yeah. I've got a flat, get it done, I've got engine problems. You typically don't associate sure. sitting down at home, um, having some tea or beverage in your hand. And you don't see yourself like, I'm, 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 I'm going to see what this garage is doing. Yeah, today. yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but I think you've done that. So at the end of the day, I think even when you say it, it mm. might be strictly, um, like if I was a business taken away from what you've done, mm -hmm. I would say um, you've put the video together in a really fun way. Like we talk about the ideas and I know what it is we want to put online, but when, it's, when I'm watching the video, when I've seen how you've captured it and the, from, from the angles where you add it to it, it's fun for me to watch. Okay. Like when I'm watching it, I'm thinking, this is fun to watch. This is nice. Let's put it up there. It, it comes quite naturally, especially when you've got some strong personalities within the work environment. Um, the video is only as good as the people behind it, both sides of the camera, really. And I think, you know, people... If they're going to be serious and straight faced, you know, that, that has a time and a place, especially in the video industry. But when you're trying to appeal to a wider audience, especially on a, on a fun platform such as TikTok, yeah. it has to be lighthearted. It has to be happy. It has to be bouncy, you know, yeah. and that's what people want to see. That's what's going to grab their attention. That's, that's, um, that's, I, I really like that because when you also said someone who's got a strong, serious face, when you think about it, 
that's who companies tend to peak yes. when, when, when yep. they're looking for like if they decide to go on social media it's funny they don't pick the fun guy no. or the person with a great personality they want to go for the person that is most knowledgeable the about the business. business yeah they want to go for you've been with us 25 years yeah. you've gotten about a million sales while you've been here you're very knowledgeable you talk to the people that's really which the is fine yeah, yeah it's, which is fine but I think from what we've seen it makes more sense to go with that person within the organisation that has that um that, that personality. Yeah, the that, bounce, yeah. What, what, what's that thing we said again? That, because uh, Craig, that news reporter feel. Yeah, it's, you know, you've, you've watched something on BBC and it's not just how they look, but how they sound. So, yeah. you know, you've got to do the voice and you've got to make it bounce. And it goes up down it, here. You know? Hello there and welcome to Water Wood. And then your voice comes back down. So you've got to have that kind of interesting vocabulary presentation. There's, there's you know, there's a lot of subconscious fundamentals that you're not necessarily going to know you're even drawn to but because yeah. it's done in a specific style in a specific way and you, you kind of have to learn how to do that whether you, you know you're a presenter or a, or a cameraman but I think it's what's draw, what, what draws people in and yeah. there's even little things such as how you start the video yeah common one what does everybody say guys every time Every time, every video, guys, just here now, doing the, 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 you know, and it's always it's energy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's you, you, you hit someone with energy. People, you know, guys, like whatever. You, you you started with that kind of boom, but like I think a, a great way to start a video as well is with a question. So straight away, look at a generic question that's going to sort of be questioned by people. Has your tires been running out? Of, you know what I mean? Like so, you, you instantly they're engaging because you've asked them a question. question yeah. And you're then finding the problem sort of That's pro solved. Tip for you guys. Pro tip, pro tip. Start there. with a like, question. Start with a question. Start loud. Attention. Yeah. Because naturally, I guess people just, they hear a question and they want to know what is it. What yeah, of course. What, what 100%. Asking, Have you been struggling with your makeup? Oh, yeah. And then you're going to watch it. Yeah. Easy. Nice, nice. The second point we've got here is a tricky one. Because for me, I'll, I'll, I'll start off on this one. For me, the point says be authentic. Yeah. Now, um, with my experience in in different organizations, so I've been fortunate to work with a lot of different organizations from ranging from like governments to, uh, to economic offices to, to kitchen uh, as I am a chef and stuff like that. And one thing I've, I've noticed is a lot of companies like to talk about uh, authenticity yeah. and, and, and being real. But in actuality, I think businesses are not simply because no. if you compare that to what we've done mm. there are times where we've put stuff on there yeah. that most businesses would say no 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 no, no. we don't yeah. want people to know that or we don't want people to see that <laughs> or we don't yeah. want to present, look, present it you know in that I mean? way we don't, yeah, we don't yeah, want yeah. To, to, to we don't want people to get the wrong idea yeah of course and that's why I think like I think you know it, it, for us we've been very authentic mm -hmm. in the sense like we, we've put stuff there um, and even times like when we had the water damage and stuff that happened to yeah, us. Yeah, you, you know, you, you've got, you can't just show, you know, all your wins. Like, I think people would relate if you show, not necessarily your losses, but, you know, show that you have had bumps in the road. Be real. Show the struggles that you've had to face and how you've sort of overcome them. People will respect you a lot more by being real than not necessarily lying but just saying stuff that is a bit you know fabricated to make yourself look better because yeah. i think a lot of the time if it's not done in the right way people will see through that yeah. and then you can't back up that that kind of formula either yeah. so i mean to me i think yeah just just be genuine man like you, you can't beat it makes sense because for me personally i also think it's the case where um people have got this natural perception where they feel like um because I, I can't remember where I read this, but it was some psychological study where it says most people like to feel needed. Mm -hmm. And it's the case where when you're, I feel like when you're real and you're authentic online and you're, you're showing every aspect of your business mm -hmm. and, and what it is, most people then get that perception like, yeah. you know, this is a company that is, it, it, you know, they've got their wins, but they've also got their struggles. Of course. Which let's like, as for me personally, I'm saying like as a customer, when I see most businesses putting out stuff, talking about this is what we're doing, this is what we're going, this is what the harsh thing, and then I feel that need to support, sure. simply because it makes me feel needed. It yeah, makes yeah. me feel like, yeah, I have contributed. Every, everybody likes business. an underdog story. You get what Not, I mean? So, so it makes me feel that. So I, I think when you're being real and people can relate with every aspect of your business from the ups to the down, yeah. they have that need to feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to support, I'm going to like, I'm going to share. They like, they, they like to see a journey as well, like especially if you're a new business and you, know, you, you start creating content from the, the get-go. 
um, it, it's nice for people to sort of follow you and then see that journey over time as well. Yeah, I've done it with, with my own business. We've done it with NTX. You know, we've shown little yeah. little growths and, you, you know, it's going to be little subtle things over time that you just get better at or, you know, yeah. things that slightly change. But ultimately, you know, people like to see that story. And I think yeah, even definitely. if you condense that into one video over time, people would love to see that. So, I mean... Getting off tangent a little bit, but I mean, with TikTok, the same the same thing. You know, as, as your page starts to grow, you, you you kind of begin to realise what works and what doesn't. Yes. Um, and you know, a lot of influencers and stuff, they'll tend to follow more of what's trending. So it's yeah. not necessarily what's personable to them. Yeah. It's more kind of what everybody else is doing, and then how yeah. they're sort of replicating that into their format. Yeah. I think for people that are looking to do a business, sort of either TikTok, Instagram Reel, that kind of stuff. Be, be knowledgeable and be sort of giving with the stuff that you know, you know, give out free information, give out free tips, give out stuff that people aren't necessarily going to know. I mean, even with, <coughs> with, with, with the garage page, we're putting stuff out there that, you know, some mechanics will comment, oh, well, that's pretty common knowledge. But, you, you know, we're, we're putting it out and people are going, oh, my God, thank you. You know, yeah. we didn't know this. So nothing to anybody is common knowledge because at the end of the day we're all we're all knowledgeable in different areas so you know if you if you've got a hair salon and you're putting out stuff about how to color hair or the best cut for this season or whatever you want to put out you know not everyone's going to know that which is great so you know work to your strengths i think that's um another good point like some more pro tips there so to summarize like most businesses, you know, you, you'd like to portray yourself. Um, if you've got a business, you want to portray yourself in a certain light. And I think from what we've gathered from our experience and from what we've seen with other businesses that we've worked with is, is be authentic. And when you're being authentic, be really authentic. Yeah. Don't try and hide something because you're afraid of how you'll be portrayed. Just be it. And then when, like another thing Fraser says, like whatever seems basic to you might not be to the, to the people who are watching you. So share information, share everything. Um, Fraser, you did mention one more thing when you spoke about influencers jumping in trends. Yes. That's going to bring me to our third point now oh. because now I'm not even going to start. I want you to start on this one because the the third tip on this says be quick on trends. Yes. Like as a you just talked about influencers and you're talking trends, but let's 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 put that in the light of businesses now. The Is, would you advise a business to to be quick on trends? Yes and no. Okay. Oh, okay, there's there's a there's a split divide, um, because right, Let's what's trending is cool, what's trending is good, but how many times are people going to listen to that same sound, that same dance, that same thing, whatever it is? How many times is that going to be fabricated and replicated by other influencers that necessarily aren't trying to promote any particular skill or or business? So if you're a business, what I would say is, yes, jump on the sounds. The sounds of TikTok are really important. So if you know that there's a particular sound that's trending, use it on your video. Even if you turn the volume right down to two, as long as it's on slightly in the background, great. That'll boost your views. But at the same time, don't just try and copy everybody else. Look at those trends and then say, well, can we replicate that into our business or our profession and make it fun? So yes follow trends but just be careful you don't want to just fall into that category of like the other hundred thousand people that are doing the same thing because it will only get you so far it's not showing any kind of unique factors about you or your business so yeah it, it, it's it's a gray area but i think just be aware that you can do it and it will get you somewhere in some aspects but not all the time because you can very easily just fall into a big fish net of you know mm -hmm similar things so what we're saying is follow trends but follow them wisely yes so it's basically in the sense where be quick on trends the tre it's funny because with tiktok it's different with other social media platforms that you know facebook instagram um twitter we find like when there's a trend on those platforms like everyone like um uh, let's 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 pick a let's pick a trend on on Instagram. Give me give me a general. Uh, can you remember any trends on Instagram? On Instagram. Yeah, let's just say any anything oh, you've seen on Instagram that was that was trending. It's hard because nowadays a lot of trends you see on Instagram came from TikTok. True. I mean, Instagram Reels has now popped off, and yeah. it's Instagram's answer to TikTok and. You'd be surprised, actually. I've done a bit of research, and and TikTok's actually banned in quite a few countries. Yeah. So, 
because they didn't like. I know for a fact they're probably banned in China. Yeah, <laughs> China bans everything. I, I think it was China, India. Quote me if I'm wrong, but they brought in, in Instagram Reels because there was more kind of uh, what's the word? They could they could filter through it a little bit better. Whereas TikTok's quite a bit of a free for all and yeah. videos on TikTok and videos you can watch anything. Yeah, pretty. And much. then it's like there's no. Because when I remember when I joined TikTok, I couldn't get out of the page because mm. I kept pressing the back button, mm. and every time it reloaded for just new video. TikTok sends you uh, fake notifications, like Wendy posted a video, and you click on Wendy posted a video. You never see Wendy's video, but then you're instantly that's it. Two hours so in, and you're I can see why they, sucked like, in. TikTok doesn't have that um, filter. That filter, um, but as as we're saying, okay, because for me, I think the point I was trying to get to is the fact that. Like on Instagram, if there's a trend, say, everyone's jumping off or board into a pool and showing off their tricks, you tend to find that um, people start uploading that trend of, oh, look at me, I'm jumping yeah, off. Yeah, copying, of, yeah. You know, but I find with TikTok, the, the, the sound defines the trend. Yes. So it yes. could be, you know, um, show me... Show me your boyfriend's massive without. Tell me your boyfriend's massive without telling me your boyfriend's my. Or show me your car is clean without. And that yeah, yeah. sound then defines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That trend. And it's always that like robot and you, voice. Yeah, and then show you me find, your like, car is clean. It wouldn't. It, it wouldn't. A lot of the videos wouldn't necessarily be like if you say stuff like you know, um, show me your rich without showing me your rich. Mm -hmm. I, I, you mm -hmm. find, I find a lot of time the videos aren't necessarily somebody showing themselves. Oh no, I'd, I'd say if you if you can play it off in a clever way that yeah. you're going to do something that people expect you to do and then it isn't that, then, then isn't. that that definitely. I mean, I, that's 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 beautiful that you said that because that's the amazing about I find about TikTok is that that sound or it could be it could be the the sound du -du 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 -du. yeah <laughs> and then that. <laughs> that, that, that's what's amazing to me about TikTok. So when we talk about on trends on TikTok, yeah. and you mentioned sound. Mm. I think that's very interesting because businesses can use that sound in many different ways. Hundred percent. You know they can use, um, and we find this in in commercials that you see on TV, online. They use music. Oh yeah. They use diff different sounds. Tick, to TikTok even influences the charts now. Yeah, um, it does. Like a UK number one now can be purely based because it's popped off on TikTok. It's TikTok. It's crazy. Look, 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 look at Buster Rhymes Touch It. Yeah. They literally brought Buster Rhymes Touch It back, and I kind of like I I I haven't seen the chart or whatever's going on with the song, but I know for a fact like. Last week I heard that song so many times mm -hmm. on TikTok and on Instagram and even it's on just Twitter it's just so rammed down your throat because when the sound starts to trend you know you end up with just so much going just on so much so that's interesting I think I think I think I really love the fact that you mentioned the sound I think as a business is 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 picking out what part of a trend you can use to your advantage yeah. and like Fraser said the sound would be good so I think um, yeah then, you, you use the sound but I mean sometimes. Some people won't even do what the sound's telling you to do or what the sound's doing with the trend, but then because they're using the sound, but then putting a kick-ass video next to it, it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be anything related to anybody else. That's what's going to break the convention because that's what's going to draw the attention because the people are going to be expecting, oh, well, it's, it's that sound, so it's going to be this dance or whatever, but it, it ends up being a flip side and that's where you get people's attention. They're yeah. like, oh, who's this? And you can even switch it because for me as a chef, I'm thinking now, if I wanted to do uh, a little video on TikTok, yeah. I could I could imitate that sound. Show me your blah blah blah, and do something that works for me. Like you know, tell me your food's the best without telling me your food's the best. I'll go first. Boom, mm. and, I, and because but you could start that. You, you, know what I'm you could literally start like, that. I could, I could start that. Like I'm gonna start it before we post. The video. <laughs> Copyright it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, that, and that's interesting. Thanks for mentioning that because that was, that was yeah, no cool. problem. Man. And we're gonna come to another point now, which says choose a niche. This is very a niche. weird to me because is there a niche on TikTok? Does that is exist? Is there a on niche? TikTok? I mean, there is a niche. There, there is many niches in the sense that if an, it, you can say that a niche is someone's identity, I guess, and someone's personality. True, because that's someone's skill set. That yeah, those those sell on TikTok. They're technically niches. <laughs> well, I think the reason why I'm asking that is because you find a lot of people. They have a certain skill set. Yeah. Like, I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. If you go on my Instagram page, you will see my food. And that's what I love to do. I love to create recipes. So what you're expected to see on your page. It's what you expect to see yeah, on my yeah. page. <clears throat> but 
I'm very fresh on TikTok. We just I just joined TikTok like last week. I know I was I was forced to join TikTok literally because I used to upload videos on my stories. About it's a, it's my, the most reachable routine, platform by far. About my daily routine and family. Yeah. And people wanted to see that. Mm-hmm. So I find it... So the reason why I'm saying like, is there a niche is because I've got my skill sets. Yeah. But if you go on my TikTok, you see more of my family. Yeah. You, I think there's probably only one post there on food simply because that's what that's that's really what they wanted to see. Like they... they, they like, it's, it's like we know like you can. To me, like, we know you can cook. We know you can yeah. cook. Like we, we want to see something else. Skills, yeah. But we love to see you and your family interact. Mm-hmm. We love the fact that you're a chef who's also a stay-at-home dad who's also working. Like we want to see how you're juggling all that shit. Show us. Sure, sure, sure. So, does a niche really apply? Mm, I don't, to I don't know. Depends how you want to define niche, really. Cause, True, I guess. Because like it's it, 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 it's it's definitely a a, a grey area yet again, but. I think your niche can be your your vibe, your personality, your strength, your piece of information, your knowledge, whatever. There's no restriction. I think everybody has their own style and everybody's going to take a different approach, no matter whether it's a trend or just a video that they're doing. So how would we translate that to a business? And, and a perfect one for me is a bread making company. There's bread everywhere. Bread. There's, there's so many companies bread. making bread. There's bread everywhere. Everyone's making sliced bread, white bread, brown bread. You name it. Aldi bread. You know, <laughs> all the breads are there. So how, how, would, how would a bread company define themselves in English? If I had to say, I would probably tell, uh, I would probably say they think outside the box. Oh, yeah. I'd, and I'd, go, I'd, away from, yeah. go away from the product yeah. and more about the personality of either the business as a whole mm. or a, a, a lot of, of, or the personality of the people involved in key areas of the business. I would, because right. I think what I'm saying is, you a lot of times you you see. I would break it down into uh, I don't know. I'd break it down into kind of what the business's strengths were. So if they know about the bread making process, then break down the bread making process. If they know that Johnny has got a good knowledge on seeded bread and why he uses these particular seeds in the bread, then go down that route. You know make a bit of fun you know use rap songs where they use the reference of bread instead of money and then play on that you know that your brain could just sort of explode everywhere really you could just pick out kind of any know, point me, of reference it, they're all good examples but they're like they're, they're like different i don't necessarily i don't see each of them as like because i'm trying to say like 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 let, let's 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 give free free marketing right now to a bread company out there because that's what I'm trying to say. Like, how do we imagine okay. a bread company? Like, I would say it's like Sky, Virgin. They, you, you got all these people. Hovis. <laughs> so, three marketing tips for a bread company. Like, if we had to tell a bread company to define a niche, like to me, like I was using the the, the situation of um, Sky, Virgin, and all of that. Yeah. That provide like broadband and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it was our like Sky at some point just focused solely on on like shows channel like they, they do so much more yeah but they focused on like like the on demand stuff um I think and being able to record and they used the personality of Idris Alba and oh it, I remember that was, yeah yeah and, yeah, and yeah, yeah 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 I, for me I felt like that was so successful mm. simply because like a lot of people like the amount of times when they started doing that, I, I would hear people say, oh, what's that show again? You know, when Idris comes up and he says, oh, I love to, the amount of times I heard people say that when they started doing that. And then it's the same with EE when they started using Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. And uh, it, it was just. When he, they started using Kevin Bacon, I was like, well, his career's gone down the toilet. But then he actually, now that's become then, his. That's, that's become his, his like, and thing. It's, the thing where, like, it's become his defining you see, thing. You see EE, you see Kevin Bacon, like, you, you, you see one of them, you expect the other. You instantly know, like, you easily expect that's the other. it now, Kevin and it's Bacon. It's just that EA. type of thing where. And, and, and the reason why I believe that worked so well is simply because if I see Kevin Bacon on TV and I see. A background I don't recognize. I immediately think new EE commercial. What they're gonna do? What they're gonna say? What they're having Kevin? It's always him, me. like in the street on a bench, and he's just like, you know "Are I mean? you sick of having bad signal?" Like it's and every it's like, time. It's so it's cheesy. So for me, yeah. if I was thinking to a bread company, I would say, "Use Kevin, <laughs> use Kevin Bacon for your <laughs> bread." I would nah. say like that was what I meant. Like I would probably say like find a personality within the company and find. hundred oh, percent. It always it, it always comes back to 
personality and, and, and a face of the product. So when you're promoting a product or service, you want to create at least one to five different characters or personalities within that brand. And I think that, to me, is key. So if you're a bread company, you know, like the Go Compare advert, you've got the Go Compare yeah. guy, but you'd have the bread guy. Yeah, yes, yeah. So like even the Go Compare one, and the thing is, there was always a clear message for for Idris. It was the the, the, the being able to download and record. Yes. And he sold that every time, regardless of what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. For Kevin Bacon, for me, the story every time was he, he was the best network. Oh yeah. And you, be what, you believed yeah, you believed it of, with the advertisement. Regardless of what they were saying, if someone's having trouble with the Wi Fi, whatever, he always came back to it. You believed him. Like, like, you believed him. I didn't change to EE, but I was like like I'm like I'm with E E and I think they definitely kept me on E E with a lot of that because at that point in time I just thought like I'm not having any problems and if I remember Kevin Bacon is Don't do it, Akuda, don't leave yeah. it. <laughs> but then it was like <clears throat> the go compare guy yeah. it was the same thing as personality, same message that, that, every video, regardless of it, they circled back to that same message. So I would say for for a company looking to find a niche or looking to develop a niche on yeah. TikTok yeah. is personality, yeah. pick a message and always circle back and to that rec message. And recur, recur the message. But then, I mean, on the flip side of that, look at Go Compare. Go Compare for years just kept it as Go Compare, yeah. whatever. Um, but now they're doing like, you sat in the bloke's house and he's not got the Go Compare advert on and he's like, people don't think I'm an opera singer. What? They and changed that during the lockdown. Yeah, they flipped. And I think that was clever. Worked. Yeah, that was super very, that was clever. Super clever. Super clever. That was very, that was super clever. And they changed it during the lockdown. Broke the convention completely. And they just broke that convention. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's strange because during the lockdown, everyone was trying to do more captivating things because everyone sat at home. Yeah. And it's where they flipped the script. They went more relaxed. Yeah. And everyone was just like, and I think it was just, just like it was like showing them on a laptop. It was like this is me actually. Think like it. It, I think it's just clever that if you can adapt no matter what kind of situation you're in, especially with your messages and your sort of output of video, regardless of what you, it is that you do, like, you're on to a winner, I think. But then we, when we think about it, when Idris is talking about all of this Sky stuff, mm -hmm. he's talking about the things we talk about at home. Oh, I want to record, I'm not available, I'm, I'm going to be at work, I want to record and download it now. So later. being relatable. And then we cave and bacon the same thing. Good that you mentioned relatable, because we cave and bacon the same thing. Most of the times, if I'm having problems with my data, what do we do? What network are you with? Okay. That's what we ask each other, yeah, like, yeah. oh, like maybe, because they, they made it relatable. Don't go with O2, the crap. The same thing, I've never gone O2. I've got an um, iPhone 12. You know Pro. what, the last time I knew anybody, like, this is no shade to O2, because um, I, I've, I've just never used O2, but the last I've time I remember been speaking to somebody and then them saying they were on O2 was when the Nokia N90 was 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 the happening phone? I've been with O2, time. and I think that's what two thousand and four, yeah. five. Yeah, I mean I've been with O2 for like all my life since a mobile phone. You know, my first ever one, whatever. And I can't believe I've always never had a problem really. But I buy the new iPhone twelve Pro Max, and it's got the worst signal of any mobile phone <laughs> I've ever had. I've got the best phone with the worst thing. Like my girlfriend's, she's got like a ten, and it's ten times quicker. And I'm like, what am I paying for here apart from the camera? Uh, I think uh, if, if O2, if anybody from O2 is watching this and you want to prove us wrong, we're so, happy to take it. Test out your iPhone 12. Test out your iPhone 12 and, and prove to the audience that we were. Wrong. You know what? Best camera ever, you know, we're filming on one right now. Best camera, 4K, fantastic. Signal. I'm, I'm really an Android guy, to be honest, but I cannot fault the camera on that phone. I just, I can't. I'm sorry. I've, I've seen, oh, I can't remember the name. I, I saw the advert on the, and it was like it had. 50 times zoom in this case he's like zooming from across the city to, onto another guy on top of another building and it was on some android phone like, it does make me question it but i've always been an apple user and i tried android and i just couldn't i couldn't work out how to use one i just i've always been an android my brain was just like nope i've never used i've never used an iphone i'm always an android person i felt like it, it, it's very compatible with what i i need to do but i definitely couldn't fault like i i, I give credit to the camera on that phone yeah man yeah proper credit Okay, but yeah, so if you're a bread company, um, take our advice, like, find a personality. Get that bread. Get a message. Get, the, get, <laughs> the, <laughs> get that bread. Get that bread. Get, get a message yeah, and man. just wrap around that message, yeah? Anyway, um, gone off on a tangent. Gone off on a tangent. Bomb. Going back to another one. Um, this is a simple one, and I think a lot of companies sh should be able to do this one. We shouldn't spend too much time on this one. It says, prepare and practice. 
Um, I think companies do, um, businesses do prep stuff. Um, they practice. They they're very. Businesses like to make sure if we're gonna do something, it's gonna work. And yeah. We're gonna we wanna see. So I think they do a lot of prep practice. But in terms of, I think in terms of TikTok. I, I was just about to say, so, media in general. especially when I come to videography and, you know, when I'm getting the lights, the sound equipment, the cam you know, the, the full sort of whack, yes, preparation is key. You need to sort of, you know, get yourself getting the best shots, etc. Now, there's two types of preparation. There's technical preparation and then there's um, obviously sort of the practical. And practical is going to be more your spoken word, um, your direction of the actual person on camera. So... I think when you're preparing for a video, especially like an informative video, then you're going to kind of want to be able to condense it down into five points, three points, two, whatever it is, but just make sure you know exactly what it is you're talking about before you hit record because it's easy just to hit record and you kind of know what you're going to be saying, but you've not, you're just going to kind of wing it. And believe me, you'll be there for five, 10, 20 takes doing it that way. If you kind of know what direction you want the video to go in and you're answering those key points that you've pre-prepared, fantastic. But then I would also say there is a time and a place for that authentic hit record, go with it kind of kind of vibe too. So so are we, are we saying... I'd say there's a mix. Are we saying we disagree with this point? I wouldn't say disagree. I'd say you... I wing a lot of videos sometimes yeah. and that's, that's a human thing to do. People tend to just kind of go with the flow. But then... When you're getting into more strictly, especially more uh, like knowledgeable teaching kind of vibe, yeah. then you definitely need to be able to know what you're on about. If you're if you're just talking crap because you, yeah. you think you know what you're on about and you haven't researched the facts, you're gonna get called out. Get called like out. hands down, you're not prepared. You've just sort of gone, well, I know a little bit about this subject and I'm gonna try and say my opinion on it. And believe me, you'll you'll get hanged. You'll get shot down. This one is, um, um, I think it's. Um, it's an honor, um, I wouldn't say it's a straight, it's, it's a straightforward point. So if anybody out there has got anything they want to say, if you've got any points um, that you want to add to everything you've heard, of, um, heard us talk about, yeah. and this one, leave a comment, please do let us know. For me, I would say <clears throat> most companies tend to prepare practice stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but like you said, in terms of social media, um, winging it tends to work. Because then you've got bloopers, people like yeah. bloopers, people like mistakes. People like when fun things happen, and fun things happen when you're literally just trying to... Yeah, you get cocky words up or something, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. So, and you never know what you capture in the moment as well. So sure. I would probably say prepare and practice is good, mm -hmm. uh, but I would say don't take it too seriously. Um, wing it sometimes and see what you come up with. Uh, you never know what could happen on the spot. Um, next point, which is something I know uh, most businesses are going to find weird. It says... Um, just to reiterate, um, we got this point of this website that we're putting up again, but we did not read um, what they had to say on the issue. We just took the points and because we wanted to talk about our point of view on that point. So we didn't read anything they said because we didn't want that to inf like influence what we no, were going to no, say. Yeah. So the next point says, immerse yourself on the app, which is something I think a lot of businesses tend to not do simply because actually let's put these two points together immerse yourself on the app and don't give up now i'm going to say a quick piece on it and then i want you to talk okay okay the reason why i'm going to the reason why I'm, uh, i've put these two points together is because a lot of times most companies see social media tiktok and all those type of platforms yeah like I said in the beginning, they see it as like kids stuff, whatever, mm -hmm. but they know it can generate money, they know it can generate leads, sales. 100%. So I find what companies tend to do on time is they just want to create something, uh, and businesses as well, small businesses, even if you're just selling, if you're just one person in a business, I'm talking to you too, you know, people tend to create stuff, yeah. throw it on there like a form of advertisement or whatever, or yeah. showcasing a product. Sure. And um, they expect it to, to, to do the work. Yeah. Like I've created this, you go out there and then do the work and, and bring in people. And then what I find is um, they've not immersed themselves enough in that app mm. to, to understand like what's working with this app, what works, what, what, what can I do on here? So they just sort of create stuff. Mm. They, 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 they create what they feel like, this is what I need to showcase. Sure. They don't immerse themselves to know what's working. They just think this is why. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah. Well, and they put it up there. And then yeah. this, this is why I put the second point. It's a tough one. With it is when that doesn't work, they give up. 
Oh, so yeah. it's not generating yeah, yeah, yeah. sales, it's not generating leads, it's not bringing anything back. Huge. Boom. And then they give Huge up. Huge point there. So you, you, you talk about this because that's my point. I know for a fact companies and businesses tend to not immerse themselves on the app. No. And as soon as they put something out there or a couple of things out there and they check, um, which is one thing um, the, the, the head of the company, the director of NTX, Nathan, always used to say is that a lot of businesses focus so much on quick ROI. Mm. They want something like, you know, give me back returns right now. Give me back. And nobody ever understands. Got to prove yourself like, over time. It's a long yeah. run. You got to prove so, yourself over time. Like okay. I said, companies don't immerse themselves and they give up to it. I'll have, I'll have to break it down a little bit because that's like, it, it's true. It's like a big, a big sort of, what's the word? Category. So, I mean, firstly, when you say don't give up, I mean, the amount of people that I've seen, they start up an online profile they start up a TikTok, they start up an Instagram page, da 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 And then for the first three weeks, four weeks, they're bloody active as anything, they're posting, they're hashtagging, you know, they're getting a slow return on their followers, you know, they're quite, they're not quite to grips with their content, so they're not quite sure on what to be posting, but they're like, you know, let's say a cupcake business, here's my cupcakes for Julie, here's my cupcakes for Stephen, here's my cupcakes at the party, whatever. Um, and then, you know, week four comes, week five, week six, and they slowly get too busy, and then they start to slow down. They feel like they're not reaching the maximum followers. And what, what they're not really understanding is you can't just build a 20,000, 30,000 plus following with just putting out pictures. Yeah. That, I don't care what anyone says. Like you, you can't expect that kind of return unless you're taking pictures of something that's going to get that kind of value and likes. Let's be honest, the human race is quite a fickle thing. It's usually girls in bikinis that get all the likes and they grow a following very quickly. But if you're a business, you're an independent business, unless you're associated with a big brand, then you're not necessarily going to get that return that you're looking for. Um, but consistency is key and consistency proves over time whether it's six months to a year and I know that sounds like a really long time but for some people unfortunately it doesn't happen overnight on the very few that do you know get that sort of lucky strike and they put something out that blows them up great you know and that sort of I think when people start to get more of a following that gives them the motivation then to do more where when people are getting low return followers and likes wise that's not feel to them. They don't feel like they're they're reaching. They like that's what I mean. People feel like they're wasting time, and then they tend to give up. So that's good. Like what we're saying, as as Fraser just mentioned, is uh, give yourself of a longer time frame to to see a return. And within that time frame, stay consistent. Keep posting. Use a wide array of so many different things: pictures, videos, gifts. Um, just use as much as you can. Just use as much as you can, um, and then let's talk about immersing yourself on the app. Now, as a business, let's let, let's let's talk about it from like um, I wouldn't say one extreme to sort of halfway point. Let's talk about it from like a new startup, uh, from yeah. ranging from one to three people within that organization. When we talk about immersing yourself on the app, what, mm. what, 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 let me let you go first. What do you think is the best okay. way for them to really? get into grips with a platform like TikTok. Right. I mean, strategically, when, when you say immerse yourself in the app, that's, it's got to be taken with a pinch of salt because if you're going to sit for three hours scrolling through TikToks for you page, you're not really going to get much value. You might get the odd video that's going to give you an inkling of kind of what's trending and stuff, but necessarily, is what you're watching going to be relevant to what you want to create? Probably not. Will it give you an understanding of how people lay out their videos? Definitely yes. So, Understanding the fundamentals of how to post, how to speak, how to put a video together, that's quite helpful. Um, and understanding how the platform works, that's, that's another thing, even down to the ratio of the videos. So last week we did a test run on posting horizontal 16 by 9 sort of widescreen videos on TikTok as opposed to your normal phone shape. 9 by 16. Didn't, normal one. didn't hit really that much at all. People don't like to see that yeah. they always want to see that Full phone screen. so screen. being aware of making platform specific content oh big word um platform specific content is definitely the way forward so be aware of what platform you're using if you're going to use instagram mm -hmm. you know use a square go widescreen whatever facebook it's pretty much a free for all you can post whatever you want but then when it comes to tiktok like i'd just say you know 
A, you've only got a minute to do it. Mm -hmm. B, you've got to do it in the specific shape. C, use the right sounds. Um, you know, th there's a lot of well-known factors of what makes yeah. a successful TikTok. Your hashtags, huge. Mm -hmm. If you don't hashtag, unless you've got a big following, doesn't tend to, you know, it doesn't tend to pop off. Occasionally it does, but, you know, arguments say most of the time it won't. So immersing yourself in the app is definitely learning Definitely. each little factor of what it takes to post that video. I've given you those little tips there, use them as you will, but just make sure, you know, very simply, you've, you're following the trend of that, not necessarily the trend of what's actually the, in the video. Good stuff. I mean, Fraser does um, a lot of like tips videos. Um, the last one you posted was transitions. Mm -hmm. You're talking about different video transitions, which is really good. Um, my favorite one you did for me was the shake one. I yeah. really like that shake one. I've yeah. seen a lot of influencers use that really well. Yeah. And the content itself for me has been quite useless, but the transition just made the video interesting to mm -hmm. watch. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point as a business for you to take is when you immerse yourself, it's not necessarily watch 500 videos and just find like and try to imitate like the videos you thought were doing the best. It's yeah. more or less like Fraser said, watch the videos, pick out how are they created, where they're using different transitions, where the videos quick, 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 quick shots. Um, was it up to a minute? Do people tend to like a minute long video or do they mm. like short 30 seconds video? So immerse yourself in understanding what makes a good video uh, rather than focusing solely on the content. I big, think that's a very strong big, yeah. pro tip there from Frazier. If you're not writing that down, um, I don't know, meet me outside my house at 6 o'clock and we'll fight because <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're clearly wasting your time. Nah. <laughs> and I don't like when people waste their time. But definitely pro tip there. Thanks for sharing that one, Fraser. I'll say take that on. We've got uh, three more points here and we're just going to breeze through these points really quickly. Um, the next point says, tell a story. Tell a story. This for me is a no-brainer. I feel like the days of the days of Facebook, because when Facebook came, it was very business. It mm, was it was mm. in in the early days of Facebook. It was it was strictly business. Hi, my name is Paul, and my company mm, manufactures a certain type of tire. <laughs> uh, when you go over a bump, the tire makes a little sound. To you still get those videos now, man. Yeah, you know I'm saying yeah. like, you, but that's it's Facebook because aunties and uncles are, not, are mostly on Facebook nowadays. And they'll watch that stuff and just like it. Like they just they're like they're like kids and you like aunties and uncles on Facebook for me are like kids on YouTube. Yeah. They will like and subscribe to anything. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna spend money, but they will like and subscribe. If they like that particular vibe, yeah. Yeah. Um, well then I find like with the more um, I mean Twitter's done a great job mm. of, of, of staying alive and I don't mean staying alive in the sense of it's still there. I mean, we, it's, it's, it's still valid to, to the current generation, mm. the older generation, mm. and our generation. Yeah. Um, um, so Twi Twitter has just captured gen ecstasy. Um, and then TikTok is more like mostly Gen Z with a lot of Gen Ys on there still throwing out stuff I and Gen X. So I think, yeah. well, well, anyways, back to the point. In terms of telling a story... It's just everything online now is, is, is a story. I, I feel like that's a no-brainer. And if a business is going online to market something and you're not telling a story, if you're just saying, look, we made this, I, I feel like... I think um, what are you doing? people people on TikTok, even with... They, they use the real basic fundamentals of filmmaking. Now, re really, really simple is like angle changes. So they'll walk, say, for example, you film someone walking down a corridor... The average person would stand at the end of the corridor and that person would just walk towards them. But it's the fact that they took that time to sort of the person's walk in, they'll film a little bit here and then they're, they're you know, they're, they're breaking up the scenes yeah. a little bit more. They're breaking up the action. So you go to reach for a cup, you then change the angle for a, really basic stuff like that. But because of the angle changes, it's constantly making you, this is why you can sit through a two and a half hour film, the angle changes, the, the, the storytelling, you know, whereas you, 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 make, you make a good point because I find even nowadays with the, with small, videos where it's the same person just recording themselves from a different angle and playing different roles they do the same thing I very find. basic they, they, but they very change the angles. yeah yeah uh, different voices different voices they change where it's coming from and, and, like, and you're right that's very entertaining and then again it's 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 storytelling it's, it's basic filmmaking you know it's like gcse 
BTEC, whatever you want yeah. to call it, film. It, it's so simple, but what they've managed to do is without using the professional equipment, just smartphones, they've now been able to start you know they're, they're, they they are low quality but that's what you expect but that's what makes them funny and that's what makes yeah. them engaging that that is their niche you know what there's a video um and i think it's called how to summon soldier boy it's a very funny video it literally is funny but i think why i really like about that video i'm thinking about it now mm. because of what you just said is because he it's just one guy in the video and he shoots the video from like different angles him walking towards the bathroom, him getting in front of the mirror. And before I even saw the tagline yeah. for this video, yeah. I just, I was watching it. So yeah. I didn't know what the video was about. All I know is I could see this guy just screwing. So, and immediately I find that very interesting because when we started talking about this point, I was thinking story in terms of telling a story, like physically, literally yeah, yeah, yeah. telling the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just spoken about the basics of filmmaking. And I find that it brought me back to that video because I realized like, Dude, that didn't, he hadn't said a word. No. But I was already putting the story together. He was telling me a story like, okay, he's going to the bathroom. He's going to say something. This is intense. The sounds, the different angles. Oh, yeah, the choice you know, music. Look, he, same again, though, you know. And I, and I could already, I, I was already perceiving the story from there, which is another interesting thing. So I think that's another great tip from Fraser, which is like, you can tell a story even when you're not physically speaking. No. Just by shooting from different angles. The music that you use. Yeah. Um, I mean, you saw the video with my kids when I got, as soon as the music came on with, and you could tell something silly is going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. That and tells a story as music's well. So the big, music's point. the biggest storyteller of all, you know. Um, you don't realise how powerful your soundtrack is. Well, search for that video. It's a funny video. Well. How to Summon Soldier Boy. He, he goes in front of the camera, he goes in front of the mirror at home, and he goes, um, I'm the first guy to, and then a video of Soldier Boy pops up and it was like, no, man, I'm literally the first person to, and it was this crazy video. But good yeah. point, um, telling the story. Um, um, I didn't know this myself today because as a creative director, I'm used to putting stories together. So it's good to hear from my point of view that it's, it's, um, I feel like as a creative director, what you need to do is always get a story together make a story out of it. There's a story everywhere. Uh, no one can ever tell me there's no story anywhere. There's a story everywhere. If you don't have a story, give us a bell. We'll put a story together for you. But also a, a great thing Fraser is saying is, because you're hearing it from a creative director's point of view, from a videographer's point of view, you can, you can put a story together um, with just your choice of angles, your choice of, of music. It's, just being, it's being able to you know formulate a visual representation of what you want it to be. Yeah, so the next point we're talking about is, it just says post often. Um, I personally think like, yeah, this is a no-brainer, post often. Mm -hmm. But it also goes deeper um, yeah. into that. Uh, I'm going to let Fraser go off because you had a good point yeah, when um, we spoke about this last time. Yeah, I mean, posting just runs into the same sort of framework as being consistent. So making sure, you know, with the specific platform that you, you're posting on, definitely being consistent is, is a key thing to success. But um, yeah, you know, address the questions in your comment section with a video or just address them in general. The more you comment back to people, the more people are going to revisit the video and then that within the algorithm is then going to make your video pop off more. So definitely be consistent and just be be engaged. Like the, the be, be on it, you know, I know it's horrible for people sometimes end up getting really engrossed and they can't get off their phone. So be kind to yourself and don't feel like you need to be on there all the time. But when you dedicate the time to reply, just make sure, you know, there's a couple of comments, key comments that are going to get you a bit of traction. You know, just address those, reply to them, do a little video on the reply, you know, yeah, yeah just and it's also, keep going. Um, it's also the case of most people don't post often because they feel like they don't have anything to post. Um, we've been in this situation with a lot of our clients. Um, they've got an idea or something that they want to showcase. Um, they don't feel like it, it's, it's, it's worth anything. They only want to keep it short and brief. We get there, we start speaking to them, we look into it, we dissect it, we turn one tiny piece of one minute information mm -hmm. into like a two hour post, uh, into like a two hour different segment post. Um, so it's always the case where look, look, looking deeper, um, everything can be made into something that you can share online. Yeah. And if you don't know how to do this, it's fine. Not everybody knows how to. Get, leave a comment, ask us for some tips, or just if you're within the local area, give us a ring, 
will come in, we'll look at what it is you want to showcase and talk about. Yeah. Or if it's just managing your social media, uh, we can give you tips as well on how you can just create stuff yeah. and then you can share for a while. So it's... It t- be, di- be diverse and just be aware yeah. that you can film, you can sit like we are now, film for a whole hour, That's but then hour. you can put that hour out, great, put that out on YouTube, but then don't forget that you can take little you know, golden nuggets from that, little segments of that video. And then that's a TikTok, that's an Instagram. Or, yeah, and you can put that out. So just be aware that your longer form content can always be chopped up into short form and that little bit of information, that little bit of engagement can go a long way. Yeah, I mean, look at what we've done with this point. Like, these, these aren't our points. These are someone else's points. But when I came across this point, I remember it was a friend of mine who's got a business and he didn't really understand how to utilize this point. So I said, hey, you know what, why don't we talk about this point? Mm-hmm specifically for businesses yeah so there's always something to do guys leave a comment um ask us any questions if you want and we'll answer them and the last point final point last point says this is going to be i left this one intentionally to the, uh, as the last one it says be the first now that is very 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 general when you say be the first the first to what exactly um but i'll, I'll start off on this one okay now, this, 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 could, you, this could be seen in a bunch of different ways. One of the best ways you can look at this is when companies or businesses, especially new businesses, tend to say stuff like, no one's interested in that. Mm. Just because it's not making a big, it's, it's not moving a big crowd, doesn't necessarily mean no one is interested in it. It just probably means nobody's selling it right, nobody's telling it right, or yep. nobody's doing it right. You could be the first. Um, so what I'm just saying is, as a business, don't scratch anything off the table just because you think nobody else is interested yeah. or nobody else is doing it. You do it. You try something. You run an experiment. Um, like, we didn't see a lot of um, horizontal content on TikTok. That didn't mean, like, we shouldn't try. We no, tried. No, no. We said, Let, let's get the results try, try, for try ourselves. Trial and error. Trial and error. Like, let's see. Let's get the results for ourselves. And we tried and we see, okay, it's not working. People don't like it. That doesn't mean we will still never try again. At a point in time, we will probably come across a content where we feel like this is a really good content for, like, horizontal. Let's, let's, let's put it out there again, horizontal, and see. And it could pop off. Yeah. So that's what I mean by don't brush something off because... Not you, you. You feel like it's not doing well. Like it might. It might not take off the first time, but then who's to say the second or third or fourth or whatever? It, it. It. Again, you know, don't give up on trying something just because it didn't work the first time around. I think definitely, you know, be open minded, and if it didn't work well one way, then you can probably you know recalculate and do it a slightly different way, and that that might be the one that works for you. But yeah, definitely, you know, just. Just yeah. be, just be original. Another, another, another tip, another pro tip I'll give to you in terms of the marketing industry. Um, you tend to find this a lot with businesses that are in a special, like in a certain area, like a local area. Um, most people tend to act in the manner other businesses, mm-hmm. or either small or big, are doing within that local area. If, for instance, if you live in an area where. Uh, businesses like to just use only the word of mouth and no one's putting up billboards. And then you find most businesses in that area don't put up billboards because they feel like, we don't do that here. Mm. Or that's not a big deal here. Yeah, true, true. But then you never know. If you're a company that just starts throwing up like two billboards a month, people could really pick up on it like, oh my God, did you see there? Like, be the first. Like, I think that the major thing this point is trying to like for us what we take away from this point uh, is don't just don't shy away from something that you've never tried like be the first person to, to to try it test it yourself see if it works try new things that's one thing i always say like try new things like when we started as a company it was so hard for us to pinpoint what would work and what started working for us was trying new things just putting stuff going off the there, cuff yeah going off the grid doing what you know most people wouldn't necessarily do especially mm. marketing companies and we heard that a lot from our clients didn't we where a lot of people would come in and they sit down they talk to us mm-hmm. and they would they're like oh yeah most of the companies i called like most of the companies i called said this most of the companies i called wanted to do it this way most of the but we always just did our own way we did it different we did it a different way i think and, we, and then they loved it we're aware of 
we're aware of what works and we're aware of what and we, we stick to the basic rules but at the same time it's nice to take a fresh approach and be yeah. be unique in that way as also so yeah be original the key point be original be original be, i think yeah i think scrap the first be original. Be original. It's not really about being the first. Just be original. Be yourself. Be you, your if team. you're original, you're the first anyway because you're the first doing it in your yeah. way. So. Point taken. Pro tips. And that's that, that's it from us today, guys. Um, talking about 10 tips um, with, uh, for TikTok, for experts and businesses. Yeah. We've given you our own tips, our own spin of it. That's a lot of great information that you guys can take from. Leave a comment, let us know. Like and subscribe. Like it. If there's any um, information you find useful to yourself or to anyone on there, yeah. share it to your friends, keep it for yourself, save it. Let us know more of what you want to see of and we'll be happy to share this information, guys. 100%, we don't, we don't 100%. I mean, today has been an eye-opener, I think, for everybody. I love to get my knowledge out on the table, really help people in which way I can. You know, if you know more than me, great. If you don't know a lot, great. Learn. Let's work together, let's go. But yeah, it's nice to come back again and we'll be doing this a lot more often. And yeah. thanks for watching. Watch out for the next video. See you next time. Sandwiches. <laughs> 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 Sandwiches.